Welcome Dragon Champions to another Dragon Log Gaming Presents Dragon Champions video. I am here to bring you a very special video today. I am bringing you Metatho's guide to soloing the Hard Orc raid. His link is down in the description below, B-A-D-C uh, dot info. Uh, it's a great website. I use it every day. Go click on the link. You'll see his guide popping up. You'll see this video as well, talking about how to solo hard work at T7. Uh, it is certainly possible, even with the changes they've made to tenacity. And let's get right on into the video today. First off, this is recorded on the test server after the tenacity changes. And as I mentioned just a minute ago, the tenacity changes are very good and runes are very much required now. You have to be very specific about what you choose, what you're putting on, and that sort of thing. Those are things that are very, very specific. So to make this run work, you have to run this team correctly. You will not survive... You don't need any sort of survivability of any kind. You need to get your potency to the requirements and you need to focus on speed and damage. So where do we start? Well, you start with Little Batty and Master Duo. They both have to have their potency over 78.2%. Once again, they have to have their potency over 78.2%. That is a must. It can't be lower than that. It has to be higher than 78.2%. Robin Bad must have, right? This is a must have 70% plus potency and 55% crit chance. Has to have more than 55% crit chance and has to have more than 70% potency. And you have having three star runes in the southern rune of crit chance or northwest potency will help a ton. Uh, however, we didn't have any on this video. So if you have those types of mods, if you have blue three dot mods in your southern for crit for crit chance, or if you have potency in your northwest rune, those are going to help you get to these thresholds a lot easier than if you don't have them. But they're not required. Little Baddie does not need much tankiness for this strategy at all. She just what she needs, you can she needs to you need to get you can get away with damage or speed runes to make the run marginally faster and safer. The run takes time. It does take time. As you can see in the background, this is the run. If you want to study it, if you if you're a visual person and you like to see how it's done and you want to watch how it's done, the video is here in the background. You can see how that's done. If you need to read it and that sort of thing, go right to the guide, go to the link in the description. You can read the guide for yourself and it'll walk you through step by step on how to do it. Uh or if you just need, if you're somebody who listens and you're better at listening and you can follow the directions, we're going to walk you step by step on how to do it as well. Uh, so we talked about what Batty needs. Now let's talk about what Venomate needs. Venomate needs potency and crit chance. You have to get past with Venomate the 78.2% potency. You don't want your potency stacks to be... Uh, to be resisted at all. If you can see right now on the screen, right, 10 stacks of poison are on hard work at this present moment. You only have two turns. He's only taken two turns. We've cleared the ads. So let's get on to the major points and how we how this gets done. The goal here is to kill Mar and Corcrum and then lock hard arc in a single turn for the remainder of the fight. I think that's pretty obvious, but we, we're using speed and we're using turn meter skills to get to this goal. Most of the damage actually comes from Venome getting large stacks of poison, as you can see on the screen right now. We're currently up to 12 stacks of poison, right? It's possible, it's possible to prevent hard work from taking any turns at all, but you don't want to do that. You want him to take at least one turn. He starts the fight with his summoning ability off cooldown you want the cool you want to add on cooldown in case rng fails and he gets a few turns i spent a good bit of the night tonight trying to reduplicate this run for myself and i could do pretty well for a while but then rng just kind of got me and i don't believe personally i had my characters to exactly where i needed to have them so you 
you have to make sure you have that 78.2% potency on Batty and Duo and on Venomate. Those things are absolutely necessary. The last character that you need is Kagi, and you want to make him as fast as possible. Other than that, you don't have to worry too much about Kagi. You just want to make him quick, so he's taking a lot of attacks, making a lot of attacks. Use Kagi's haste when it's on cooldown. Every time Kagi's haste ability comes up, use it every single time. You'll see that in the gameplay video. As soon as it's up, just cast it every single time. Give you a little bit of uh, how I cleared the ads when I was doing it. Uh, you kind of want to target them in the beginning. I was targeting the ads with my damage dealers while continuing to use turn removal uh, you know, on hard work because you want to make sure you get Master Duo landing that slow so he can get his turn removal and that sort of thing. Kill Mar and Corkum before either of them gets to use their AoE. And you can usually do that within within Hardwick's first turn. So you, you want him to take his turn. He will cast he will cast a buff either on himself or one of the adds. And then after that, it's fairly simple to get them down. You can you can blow them away pretty quickly. Um, I used I used uh, you know Venomate and Kagi to do that, and then keep using. Master Duo to continue to remove turn meter and that sort of thing. If Master if Master Duo does not land slow on his first attack, just restart. It's 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 not going to work. It, it, you might be able to land it on the second turn, but you'll just get frustrated. It's best to just restart completely and go and start over. Once Corcrum and Mar are dead. Only use basic abilities from Duo, Batty, and Robin, unless somehow the enemy hard orc gets turns and summons them again. So it's basically all basic attacks uh, from Master Duo, from Little Batty, and from Robin the Bad. You, yeah, Robin Bad. He's not so bad now, right? And so you want to make sure you're doing that. If you mess up, that that's... You, you'll if you want to try to do other things if you're messing around with other things that's where you're going to come off the rails and so you don't want to do that you just want to keep on plugging away um hitting those basic attacks once you get into the cycle as you can see now up on the screen use venomate's buff on robin bad primarily and only if he's less than 50 percent turn meter if hard orc is about to take a turn use the buff on master duo because Master Duo's turn meter removal ability does not is not uh, RNG dependent. If slow is there, he's going to remove turn meter, and so you wanna you wanna be very mindful about what you're doing. You wanna be able to take, uh, you be able to see what's going on on the battlefield and assess the situation appropriately. And if it looks like Hardwork's about to take in a turn, use Venomate's ability to. Give it to Master Duo so he can remove 30% turn meter. Little Batty. Taunt at the beginning. But once Mar and Corcoran are dead, only use her basic. And I think that you'll find that that's very important because the ads will just attack Kagi or, you know, and blow Kagi away. Um, she, Kagi's generally the weakest character and the, the, the AI seems to target the weakest character in the group. Um, just out of default. And so you want to make sure that your their first ability you do with Little Batty will be taunting, and then after that, do your, your basic attacks. Skill priorities, right? So if you're trying to build this team, but you don't want to have, you don't want to put in a ton of resources and that sort of stuff you be but you got to make sure you have your skill priorities and where they're at robert the bad's basic has to be fully up there you have to have it all the way to level six little valley little batty you need to have her for the emperor uh, ability all the way up master duo's slashing blow this is his basic and turn me to removal it's got to be at level six venomates uh what's your poison buff has to be all the way up to level six venomates uh venomous spit his basic needs to be up to level six his poison master passive has to be up to level six kagi's wind speed his haste ability 
can go to level five. It's not necessary for it to be level six. Um, so just keep that in mind. You also want to have Kagi's Lashing Wind Basic. I think that should be all the way to level six as well, because you got to be able to do damage and you're going to have the most damage output um, at that particular time. And so some other skills may speed up, may speed up the battle. If you want to invest into all of these characters, now some of them you're only going to invest in like Robin the Bad, right? Or Kagi. This may be the only team you use them for. It's also completely possible that you don't, you decide you don't want to run a solo team and that you don't need to run a solo team. Uh, but solo teams still exist. It's just considerably harder to do. Um, and you have to devote time and resources and the run takes about 14 to 15 minutes, as you can see here, right up on the screen. So it's very, it, it's not easy to do. You have to invest in characters that are, these are all free to play characters. They're all fairly easily accessible, except for little baddie who is free to play, but it's going to take time to get her up. I don't personally have her at seven stars. I'm actually just about to unlock her at six stars by the end of the event that's going on right now. Uh, but I, it, it's going to take a little while to get her up to seven. I have all the other characters to seven stars, but the, they do need to have, uh, you know, they do need to have gear enough to at least survive the first turn. Uh, and that is important. Uh, you don't need a whole lot of survivability, but if you, if you do get, if you, if you get caught on that third turn and he AOE swipes your entire team and kills them, right? That's, that's not good. And so if you have any questions about this, I'm going to pull up here in a minute. I'm going to allow this video to go ahead and play out the rest of the way. Uh, as you can see right now, we're at 23%, 37, 37 poisons on him. Slow is there. It's the same. It's the same cycle over and over. Just turn meter reduction, right? Add the, you know, add, add it on, add on the poison do another basic it it really is it's not easy to set up it looks super simple to do but it really isn't i like i said i spent most of this evening um trying to replicate this in my test account and i could not do it and i think now i am it makes i think it's pretty clear that if we gone over to my test account i probably didn't have venomate up where i needed him to be on his potency uh and i probably didn't have robin the bad up where he needed to be on his potency at 70 plus and 55% crit. So those are all very, very good points. It is still here. It is still possible. But as you heard in some of my other videos, I said, I didn't think soloing was good for the game. And I don't think that the way that you had to, you could solo it before uh, was good for the game. However, this is okay. This is fine. This doesn't bother me at all because the fact is, is that you're going to have to invest in these runes. You're going to have to invest in these characters. Some of these characters that don't really have any other viability other than for soloing. And then the runes themselves are going to be kind of difficult to get a hold of because you're talking about the Northwest runes, which are only on hard nodes that are hard to get. And you got to get the potency ones. So these are, it's very specific. It can be done on the test account because we have unlimited resources. It's easy to do um, that way. But if you're playing the game and you don't have a test account and you have to decide, well, am I going to invest in these characters simply to solo the raid? Certainly you might, uh, and it may be the way to go. A lot of people right now, I'm running T7 in my guild, um, and look at that victory. And let's see, look at these, look at these stats, Robin the Bad, but it, it was all right here, all Venomate all the time. So let's pull up another, another part of the video, um, another clip that he sent me as well. This is all how all the characters are set up. All the characters set up 58% crit chance, right? For Robin bad. And if you go all the way down to his speed, he's got a speed of 155. His potency is a 75.1. And as you see, it's all green dot mods, damage, speed and potency, armor, potency, speed, 
speed, critical chance, potency, health, potency, critical chance, potency, right? It's, it's a lot. If we look at Venomate, same sort of thing, right? Got a good bit of magic damage. We got a health. We can see that these they're all gear 11, right? These guys are all gear 11. Speed is 154, but potency is 8288. Right, and then you're looking at full set of potency skills, speed and uh, health, armor, but more extra potency, extra speed, extra damage, extra potency and shields. All right, and then potency, of course, in the northwest rune. We're looking at little baddie, same type of thing, all potency mods. So if we go over and look at her physical damage, it's not over three thousand, uh, but if we're looking at Right, her health, she's not, it doesn't have a huge health pull. Shields, it's just fairly normal. She's got a 149 speed, but potency is 92%. I mean, it's pretty high. Um, that's pretty good. And, but that's what's needed to do this. You have to invest in these and you have to push through them. When you're looking at Master Duo, same type of thing, right? His physical damage is under 3,000, his health is basic. All right, we're not doing anything really basic or anything. Thing, he, uh, any more than that, he's got 148 speed, as you can see, and it's all potency mods, potency damage, speed, extra potency in the secondary mods, extra speed. All right, it's it's a fairly simple formula, but it is not easy to execute. When you guys watched me do this on my on my other raid, let's look at Kagi for a second. All right, we're gonna look at Kagi, not. Not terribly difficult, um, right? It's nothing special. His speed is 172. His potency is 66. Uh, but it's not really what we were going for. It's mostly about damage. We want to get his damage up there. 35, 76 damage and 172 speed. And so that's very, very, very good. Um, very, very, very good. As you can see, the final boss has three, three million seven hundred and twelve thousand and sixty health, and it really can be done. Uh, it can be done, but it's going to be very, very difficult. It's kind of an odd lineup of characters uh, that you need. Obviously, I don't think most people have Little Baddie yet to seven stars. Uh, most people haven't bothered with Robin Bad. Uh, most people haven't bothered with Kagi, but we all know that we need Duo, and of course, Venomate's a great character. So, what do you think? Is this good for the game? I think that this change is good for the game. It still does allow for soloing hard work. You can also still solo uh, Solius as well, but it's considerably harder than what it was go check out his he has a guide on that as well the link is in the description to um, b a b e a d c dot info and i really do appreciate it i love being able to do help him out and do this video in collaboration with uh metatho i really do appreciate the opportunity if you are new around here please go to his website and check that out. If you're new to my channel and you're seeing this for the first time, or seeing me for the first time, hit that subscribe button, hit that notifications bell, drop a comment down below, and we'll see you next time when gaming and the law intersect.